Welcome guys, we are going to do more of the Harry Potter art book here, Let's see if I can get ready. So we have the our page in front of us here. Um, we've done all the characters on the left one. We also have this right page where you can see some of the characters showing up over here. There's an equivalent amount of people to do. Uh, I would also like to get the background in. So we got some work to do, ladies and gents. Welcome. If you don't know the channel, it's called The Voice of Nick. I play video games live three times a day and seven days a week. But uh, sometimes, instead of video games, we do a Harry Potter art book. We work our way through this baby. So uh, we've done a few different pages so far. Um, I guess I can scroll through them. Hold on. It's kind of weighed down right now. We did this one of uh, Fluffy the dog. We did this was a guest picture from Daniela Claire who uh, made that one. This one is uh, us with uh, Hedwig. There's a few of these babies that we have done. There was a couple more. We did where is this? Oh, this was like a graphic art thing of the Death Eater logo. And then we did something else. Oh, we did this buck beak. And at some point we did one of Harry and Draco. I can't figure out where it is though. You get the idea. There it is. Harry, Draco, dynamic duo that never was. So these are what we call um, blind design throughs. And uh, on these streams I attempt to uh, design the the scenes and characters and environments and stuff without any assistance of like what color or look things are supposed to have so um we'll uh we'll just kind of play it by ear i guess okay so i'm wondering about the floor we should probably do the top first and then go down some of these things, I don't even know what the texture is supposed to be. There we go. Hmm. Maybe if we... It could be that this is like a curtain, I guess. Let's say this is a curtain. I have no idea what this is, this purple part that I did. They didn't really put a lot of detail into the background of this one. This is obviously a window. This is the pillars, but it's like weirdly 2D. We'll try and hide that. This is like a wood panel down here. This is brick. Um, I guess this is some kind of marble and then this is tile. All right, well, we'll do this curtain first. I guess.
I should also probably put something down on top of the characters so they don't get, you know, screwed up. So we want to kind of flatten this out. We don't want it to be like a perfect tube shape. So we're going to do something kind of like that. And then this is going to get darkened and pushed into the background as we go further in. Let's, uh, I guess, zoom into this area. There we go, it's starting to come together, I guess. And then what we're gonna end up with is something closer to like this. Yeah, so you want to kind of like remove a lot of the saturation from those curtains because it's going to be uh, farther into the background. Thank you, Gaming Hour, for the host.
gaming hour figuring out the uh the secret of yesterday's streams yeah i was really pressed for time i had to get on a plane and uh obviously the day gets a bit compressed when that happens hope you enjoyed them though What is your favorite thing that you are looking forward to doing today, Gaming Hour? Welcome into the show. Can we get an exclamation mark high for Gaming Hour? Join in the stream. Welcome in. I'll get one too. Gonna go to a movie? Nice. Good stuff. Yeah, enjoy uh, your time off of work. I think I'm gonna put some I'm gonna put some yellow onto Dumbledore's face. So as to suggest like that there's candlelight hitting him. Oh, shouldn't have been there though. <laughs> because there's this big hole of uh, light. It should have come from this side. That was stupid. Well, it's magic candlelight. Maybe that's just a rim light. Maybe the actual yellow light is coming from here. Game error, BRB. Seen a little bit, game error. There you go. So we're, last time, if you uh, recall, anybody who saw the most recent episode of Harry Potter, which has been a while ago, because um, I haven't done one of these art streams in a couple months, but on the previous one, we wanted to make the background like kind of flat and, uh, you know, kind of like one color for each shape. But then I, I kind of decided against that. So now we're going back and we're going to redo the background, go over it with a lot more um, kind of detail because it didn't feel complete. It just felt uh, 
like nothing. It, it, it didn't have a cool look to it. Gary's saying that you need to get a haircut. The, uh, yeah, it's always good to get a haircut. I haven't gotten a haircut in a while. See, I don't get what a lot of these shapes are supposed to be. Like they're they're pretty like general with these shapes in such a way that the suggestion doesn't even come across of what they're trying to communicate. But we'll just kind of make something up. I guess this curtain exists behind this weirdly shaped wall. I don't think that could be true. I'm gonna like redo this curtain. We're gonna like create our own shapes here. We're gonna assume this is like way in the back. Okay. I guess this kind of makes more sense now. Or I'll put like a shadow Yeah, 
that's probably good. All right, now we just keep going with stuff behind them, and then we'll we'll put some like, you know, um, ambient occlusion around them, like we did with Neville. Although, uh, or not Neville. Uh, this is a uh, Colin Creevy, I guess. But uh, it probably overdid it with the ambient occlusion. The thing is that he's the only one who has it because he's the only one who's in front of another person besides Parvati here. But once we have all of them in front of the background and they're all occluded, it's going to look more natural. It's just because he's the only one right now. Okay, so now we want to do whatever this is. But we don't know what this is. I think that I want to... Um, I don't know what it would even be. This is brick. Or stone, rather. It's not brick. This is some kind of stone stone bricks. This is, we don't know. This is mar uh, marble or wood. I, I chose to make it wood pillars. This is wood. It's like a wood panel. You can see the kind of like geometric shapes. That's like a, a lintel. But this square has no defined shape. So we don't know what the heck it is. I'm sort of stumped on this one. Um, we could just make it into a wood panel. There's another one on the other side. You know, maybe it's like one of those, um, those kind of like uh, Japanese like things that you change behind. You know, like uh, like literally just a panel. Welcome Frost to the stream. Can we get an exclamation mark high for Frost joining the show? We're doing the Harry Potter art book again. I'm just gonna make it purple, I guess. We'll make it wood. I'll keep this out though. We'll make it wood. And damn, the brown is getting pretty pretty low here. I'm just gonna make my own shape in it because I really don't know what the heck what they were going for with this. Oh, Frost went back to work today. Can we get some hearts for Frost, ladies and gentlemen? All right, we're probably going to have to start putting a piece of paper over their faces soon. Um, let me get a piece of paper, hold on. We're gonna prepare for this. So you want to put paper down when you're when you're the butt of your hand or whatever you call this part 
is resting on the paper in an area that you've already colored in or else it's gonna rub all the colored pencils off or smudge them. Okay, that seems good. Now we can just like, I guess this part, even if it's matching that, would kind of only have a, a pattern down here. So this will just be like general whatever. Frost is eating Japanese pop rocks. Cool. I didn't know there were, well, I suppose I should have known. <laughs> There's Japanese candy for everything, for every American equivalent. What are they called, Japanese pop rocks? There you go. See, that looks like something. We don't know what, <laughs> but it's something in the back there. Now we're gonna push it into the background, obviously. Oh, Frost can't read it. Oh, it's one of those ones that doesn't even have any English on it. Nice. Okay, this wood being behind all these reds and browns kind of blends in their shirts, so we're definitely going to have to ambient those, those things. And then this we're going to make into whatever color stone this is. Let's do this part. I would assume that the DA would meet during the night time. but you'd still want some blue coming through the windows there. I'm just gonna put a blanket bunch of black through the window.
Oh, you posted it on the Discord? Nice. All right, so we'll just kind of make some weird shapes in this window. Then we'll mess with some color options. There's Dumbledore hanging out at the top. I'm glad we got that one out of the way because I was sort of uh, like not sure how I was going to approach the Dumbledore picture. So yeah, we're just adding like extra pieces of interest to this window, I guess, just because it's so um, flat otherwise. And it's going to be a nighttime scene, I think, so it doesn't need to have a lot of light or like things coming through it. I almost want it to be like a, like a, a it's coming through like a beer bottle or something. Like you can't even really see through it. It's like one of those wavy, wavy glasses that you can't really see through. Okay, I'm going to go get a haircut. Nice. See you later, gaming hour. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Hope to see you again soon. And uh, can we get an exclamation mark by for gaming hour heading out of the stream? All right, and let's just do a little bit of this. We'll add some of these like darker kind of bands. Then we're going to just infuse a little bit of blue in here. And just like kind of randomly assign it. Because the moon is going to be blue. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. We don't want it to be like the star of the show. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the stuff in the background, we're intentionally making it muddy and like less interesting than the stuff in the foreground. Cause we want the stuff in the foreground to, to come forward. You know, we don't want it to be competing for interest in the scene with the background, if that makes sense. Okay, that's getting pushed back a little bit. I'm gonna make this a little bit less 3D.
and around their like bodies is going to be where all, a lot of the ambient occlusion comes in. But we'll do that later. We don't have to implement that right now. We want to do this um, a pillar structure as well on the left. I wonder what this line is. I think it's just a mistake. We're just going to ignore it. Because it goes across like, it almost looks like it was a guide for like where the artist is going to draw this thing. And it goes across and it could even be understood to be on the windows, but then what the heck would it be here? I don't think it really is representing anything. Like even if it was some kind of design on the pillars, the pillars are 3D, you know, tubes. And unless it's at a very specific angle, it's a very specific coincidence, <clears throat> it wouldn't be at that vertical height and not have any kind of like, you know, tubular design to it. Again, this back <clears throat> area, we're not trying to make it look too, like, interesting. It's meant to support the foreground. What is your favorite thing, Frost, that you are looking forward to doing on this fine, fine Monday? Going back to work. Oh, now you want to go home. There you go. Keep looking ahead. I'm looking forward to eating. I would like to go find uh, some food. Probably gonna have a nice dinner later tonight. Okay, so we have these wooden structures here. Let's get some of this yellow or brown mixed in. Good. All is going well.
now we kind of de uh, defocus the background a lot more, or at least this part of the background. And then once we have the entire, you know, upper background in, that's when we start doing our ambient occlusion. There you go. Good, we'll put a shadow on this window, I guess. Now you want to do whatever this is. Um, I don't know what this would be. This is going to be some kind of stone. And I guess we could just start making stones, I guess. We don't necessarily want it to be the same kind of stones as before. I would like for them to be more grayish. But they're still going to be infused with certain colors, so let's just start messing around. How big are these stones? Like that. But they're also irregularly shaped. <clears throat> okay, let's keep doing stuff. Yeah, that's pretty cool. We'll shade the underneath curtain area. This, you know, lower curtain area is going to be basically black anyway, but it's a good area to test out how we want to make these stones look. Okay, so um, because the thing about stones is that they're not all the same. They're not all identical. So you want to kind of infuse in some other color into them just so that they look more like, uh, you know, because it's not like they made them in a factory. These kind of castles are a little bit more like, uh, you know, classically created. So I like to kind of infuse them with some kind of color. Yeah, I think that's cool. All right, maybe we can even put brown in there. Let's make this one purple again because it's next to his head.
very, very light amount of purple. Because you'll notice that whatever we put in actually comes through a lot. Like once all the stones are put together, you'll be able to definitely see like the difference between the purple ones and the blue ones and whatever. So we got to make sure that we're pretty careful about it. Good. Yeah, again, these these are going to be very muted in the background. We don't want them to have a lot of like uh, discernible texture to them. So we're just kind of ruining like the interesting kind of uh, specular stuff. Like we don't we don't want your eye to get drawn to the stones. Let's try the blue here. I'll sharpen this pencil really quick. Very nice. Something about sharpening a pencil. Very satisfying when it's like comes out perfectly sharp. All right, blue is definitely gonna kinda show up a lot, so we gotta be careful with how much we put in. Then you can just put kind of like a layer of gray over the whole stone. And then you'll see how the blue is definitely different looking than the purple when they're next to each other. Which is gonna look strange when there's only two stones. But when we put them all together, it gives it kind of like this interesting, like imperfection look where you get the impression that there's, they're not stones that are like normal stones. Like it's gonna look a little bit more Hogwartsy. Coffee's getting cold over there.
So now you can see this brown is going to look different than the blue and the purple. Even though it's very lightly put in as a base, you can still see it a lot more than you expect to. So we are kind of ending up doing this wall the same that we did the regular Hogwarts area. I was going to originally do it as like kind of like uh, light gray stones, but it's just less interesting looking that way, I think. Welcome as Tundra to the stream. We are doing the Harry Potter art book once again. If we get an exclamation mark high for Azur Tundra joining the show as well. Welcome in Azure. What is your favorite thing you are looking forward to doing today? As I'm saying, welcome back, Harry. Yeah, it's been a while since the Harry Potter art book made an appearance. I haven't been traveling that much recently, but now um, all these uh, all these trips are like lining up so that in this next uh, f you know five weeks or something, I'm on going to like four or five different states. It's gonna be a experience. As you're saying, frequent flyer miles, yeah. This one though, unfortunately, is on American and my frequent flyer is on United. So I don't get it for this one. But I do like to go to, um, I do just like to go to the airport and, and hang out because it's like very, I was telling somebody about this, I said I, I enjoy being alone in a crowd. <laughs> I enjoy being alone in public where it's like you're at the airport, there's nothing to do but like read a book and you just eat your food, you like go to, like I like eating airport food and just like sitting there and reading a book and like doing nothing. Because otherwise my day is usually so busy and like I'm doing a million things and there's nothing to do at the airport except one thing, which is like sit there. Same as being on an airplane, I like that too. Crossing any states you haven't been to that you're going to now? Honestly, I don't even know where I'm going. Um, they give me a list of the places, but I just kind of like approve the flights and then, you know, the times for the flight and then take it as it comes. <laughs> As you're saying, I like to watch people and wonder what their story is or see people happy on their way to somewhere. Yeah, that's nice. Like, uh, like uh, just kind of enjoying the, the vibes. There's always somebody on their way somewhere at an airport, that's for sure.
so yeah, you can definitely start to see some of the um, the colors being different here. I wonder what other base colors there would be for a brick. Maybe like a, or a stone, I mean. Maybe there could be like a red stone. As a tennis thing, I knew something was up with those streams yesterday. Yeah, I was, uh, the flight was at like seven, so I needed to get, um, if I didn't schedule my days beforehand, I would never be able to do the stuff that I'm doing, because my flight was at seven, and I got here at, well, by the time I got here, Seattle, and then landed and got off the plane and got my bag and got to the hotel, it would be like one o'clock. <clears throat> and I have to be at this thing at, um, I thought I had to be there at nine. It turns out I have to be there a little later. But, um, so I was thinking like, crap, I would, if I have to do four streams on Monday, that would mean I would have to do two of those, possibly three of those streams between one o'clock and nine o'clock a.m which is obviously like basically would not be able to sleep at all. So I instead did five streams the day before, all before uh, 5 p.m., which was when I was leaving. So I think I did all five in even before 3 p.m. Oh, no, I did four of them before 3, and I did the last one. But yeah, that was uh, an intense day. How about this kind of sky blue? Did you, uh, as a Tundra or anybody watching, um, get a chance to see the most recent uh, Japanese food stream where we went to Menu Musashi? They had like a limited edition type of ramen. <clears throat> and uh, for anybody who's learning Japanese out there, I uh, got a couple of conversations in there. Talked to the, there's one waiter there who, um, who speaks Japanese and I talk to him every once in a while and I said many things wrong but I said them confidently which is half the battle. Ross saw it nice. Didn't that food look really good? I, I uh, want to go back there and get that again. It was a ramen or a skamen like the the other kind that I get where the the bowl of broth is separate from the bowl of noodles and then you put the noodles into the broth as you eat each bite of noodles. Um, and so it was scammon, but with pieces of katsu, uh, chicken katsu or pork katsu or something. And the uh, broth was curry, Japanese curry. And so it was a really, really unique um, way to do ramen, but it was very good. As a time just watching a Japanese soap opera with English and Japanese subtitles. Wow, cool. How do you get it to do that? What's the show that you're watching? Saying my heart would be pounding and my face so red if I tried to say anything with my limited vocab. Well, that's a secret is like, um, I really don't have that much vocab either, but I just try to, I try to say as much as I can and I get so much of it wrong, but, um, 
usually they can kind of understand what I meant. Like one of the things that the guys that I said to the guy was like, uh, I said like, um, oh, he was telling me where they have that same restaurant because Menu Musashi apparently also exists. It's like a chain in Japan or they have a lot of them in Japan. And uh, he was saying it was in Shinjuku. And I said like, oh, Shinjuku, I, like, um, I think I said like, uh, uh, which means like we were there 2000 ago but what I meant to say was which means two years ago uh, but I think he understood what I meant we were there 2000 ago we're Highlanders it's always funny though like like um kind of recognizing your mistakes after the fact, like almost going back and like grading yourself on your performance. Like it's so much fun <clears throat> realizing that stuff. Because then when you've, when you've made the mistake in public, it really makes you learn the lesson. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like it, it's memorable to you. It's never pleasant, I guess, to like make a mistake in front of people which is why I guess it's like more, it like bangs it into your brain more, you know? As a turn thing, you can select a language with the mode. That's pretty. Um, <clears throat> that's pretty cool because I've never seen it where you can select two subtitle languages. <clears throat> I've only ever seen it where you can choose the spoken language and then choose a subtitle language, but not like to have two subtitles. It's pretty cool. Okay, so we're getting there with this picture. <clears throat> We put in the curtain. Let's zoom out a little bit. We have the curtain here. We have the, the wood um, pillars. We have this window, which I actually like the way the window turned out. We have the, um, this, we created the design for this like wooden background thing. It's pretty simple, but I'm glad that we figured out what that was. Then we turned this into brick because they also didn't define what that was. We have this brick. So. I think they were trying to say that this was like a cut off wall that goes horizontal and the brick stops there and there's something else here. But instead we said that the, the curtains are possibly tied or something, I don't know, or snagged on something so that they are cutting off and the brick exists behind the curtains. And then we're going to put uh, wood in the back of this area. So we're getting there. The, today we didn't necessarily like complete an area. Usually we would kind of like complete it as we go, but we're going to um, occlude the background on the next one, I think, and like kind of make sure that the characters pop out from it because it's pretty like, uh, it's kind of like you can't differentiate the characters in a lot of areas. Like the, this part doesn't have a lot of shad shading. We didn't put the shading on everything. We we're just kind of putting in the, co the textures at the moment. So we'll get there. Um, guys, that's going to do it for this uh, Harry Potter stream, though. Thank you, everybody, for joining. I'll take off this piece of paper. We got more characters to do. Harry himself is hanging out there. At the crease of the page, though, why would they do that? He's the hero. <laughs> why would they put him in the spot that's hardest to actually, um, to actually uh, <laughs> color in? But um, we're gonna we're gonna raid somebody at the end. So let's get a uh, can we get a raid command in that chat? As a time saying you're watching pretty proofreader. Nice. Uh, I've never heard of that one. I watched a couple of shows. It's good to watch drama shows as opposed to anime to try and learn because they speak more authentically. Um, I watched one called uh, Kekon Dekinai Otoko, which is uh, the man who can't get married. And uh, that was a pretty funny show. It's like a kind of just like a, a kooky comedy show. 
Um, and then I also watched a lot of Terrace House, which is excellent if you haven't seen, because that's a, a Japanese reality show. So you know that they're speaking very realistically. And uh, the one I watched was where they, it, uh, they were in Hawaii, if you're interested to check that out. Um, yeah, both of those shows highly recommended. Terrace House you can get on Netflix though. I think Netflix actually picked it up uh, so that they make the episodes now. Um, so ladies and gents, that's gonna do it. Now, uh, if anybody doesn't know the channel you're watching, uh, it's called The Voice of Nick. I play video games live three times a day and seven days a week. These streams, instead of video games, we do um, this Harry Potter art book where I color in uh, each page on the Harry Potter art book. So. Thank you everybody for joining the show. It's a little bit different than normal, but it's always a lot of fun for me. I hope you guys had fun too. Now, uh, if you wanna see which games are being played on the channel, you can type exclamation mark games in the chat. You'll get a full list of all six concurrent gameplay series going now. And if you like what you saw today, don't forget to hit that follow button. Uh, there, it's not displayed on screen, but there's a follower goal of I believe seven. And I think right now we're at one. So we're getting there guys. We just crossed 1,700 recently, which is a major milestone. I'm so happy about that. Um, the six, no, 17th Danganronpa episode is out right now on the YouTube channel. That's a YouTube exclusive, so you can only find that on youtube.com slash the voice of Nick or exclamation mark YouTube in the chat. That's really exciting for me because it's the first ever YouTube exclusive playthrough series that we've done on this channel. So uh, if you guys want to check out some more voice of Nick stuff while you're waiting, between streams, definitely go check out that series. There's already 16 episodes out and they're pretty bite-sized, bingeable. They're all 30 minutes long, um, so give it a look. The uh, 34th Twitch Playbook is also out right now. That one is called How to Make the Time for Streaming. And uh, it's really one of the biggest questions that almost everybody asks about uh, when they wanna get into Twitch, so definitely uh, go give that one a look. Twitch Playbook is a free podcast I created to help all of you guys in this community either create your own Twitch channels from scratch or improve on an existing channel if you already have one. You can find it on iTunes, on Spotify, on all the major podcast platforms. The, uh, <clears throat> if you like the channel, you wanna support the stuff that I do, then consider subscribing. Subscribers get a whole bunch of stuff on here, including the Voice of Nick emote, legendary status in the chat and Discord, 200 meatballs, higher chance to win in the heist minigames and ad-free streams. Another great way to support the stream is to cheer. Uh, cheers get a whole bunch of stuff on here, including uh, the, uh, Ah, uh, crap, I just saw a page and I can't find it. There it is. Um, they can get on the cheerleader boards. But, you know, what's interesting is that the cheerleader boards have reset, ladies and gents. So it's anybody's game. The uh, cheerleader boards are totally blank this week. Now, um, thank you to everybody who supports these streams. It is very highly appreciated. You're directly helping these shows to get better. Every single day, I improve at least one thing about this family of channels here, whether it's tweaking the streams you see in front of you, whether it's creating and posting content for the social channels, whether it's adding and updating things on the Wiki or Discord, creating uh, YouTube exclusive episodes, all the stuff that we do on here, making the Twitch playbook entries, all that stuff is in large part thanks to all of you guys for supporting these streams by cheering, donating, subscribing, gifting subs, gifting games. It's very highly appreciated. Oh, this is the one I couldn't find before. That's the one we just did recently. Um, yeah, guys, so let's jump out of here. Let's do a, uh, let's do a raid on somebody's channel and uh, stick around because um, if all goes according to plan, there should be a Japanese stream coming up in a little bit as well before I head out for the day. So uh, keep your eyes out, guys. But let's see if we can find a channel to raid here. Thank you guys a ton for posting that uh, raid message as well. Make sure you guys get that copied down. The uh, raid message you can see there, it says, uh, Meatball Marauders are here to party. And you can copy that down and uh, paste that into the stream that we end up joining. or if you're on a device that can't copy paste, don't worry, you're still covered. You can uh, write in, just with your keyboard, the uh, alternate raid message, which is a uh, glorious meatball raid. You can just write that in with your keyboard. So let's see if we can find somebody to join. A lot of people are playing Dark Souls 3 for some reason. I don't know if there's like some kind of new content in it or something, but let's see if there's anybody who's doing some cool stuff that we can join like this or this okay yeah people are doing stuff people are doing things so let's say hi to animer who is doing a uh, artwork stream as well animer is um doing a little bit more creating i guess than we are animer is currently uh sculpting cthulhu 
at the moment. So let's go say hi to Anna Mayer. Let's enjoy this Cthulhu sculpture, ladies and gents. Make sure you show that love and support oops, to Anna Mayer. And I will see you guys on the next one. We have one more uh, mainline stream coming up, not video games, and one secret stream if you can find it. But I'll give you a hint, the secret stream is going to be coming up in a very short amount of time, within the next uh, 30 minutes or so. So keep your eyes out, guys. I'll see you later. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.